Hello, and thank you so, so, so much for being here at this timeless Pick a Card Tarot reading. The intention for this reading is to delve into and understand a little bit more fully how you are transforming or metamorphosing. To do so, we are going to be looking into or using the stages of the metamorphosis of the butterfly. So from egg to caterpillar to pupa or chrysalis, and then on to the fully formed adult butterfly. So in order to pick your pile this week, I felt it appropriate to pull out my animal oracle decks, and I'm going to show you the butterfly card from each one, as well as your crystal pairing. So for pile number one, we have the medicine cards. This is the butterfly card. And we've paired that with this clear quartz crystal. For pile number two, we have the wild unknown animal spirit deck. This is your butterfly. And your crystal is the lapis lazuli. For pile number three, we have the wild elemental oracle deck. This is your butterfly. And we've paired that with the black tourmaline. And finally, we have the Animal Allies Oracle Deck. This is your butterfly. And your crystal is this piece of pyrite. I will give you some time to meditate on these cards, these decks, these crystals. When you've picked a pile and you're ready to go, timestamps are in the description box below. And I will see you at your reading. Pile number ones, hello, and thank you so, so much for being here. For those of you who chose the clear quartz crystal and the medicine cards, this is your reading. So one quick message before we get into it. Um, this is the second time I'm doing your reading. I tried to do it yesterday. I tried to start all the readings yesterday. And... If you're if you've been with me for some time, you'll know you'll recognize that I'm in, in a different space. It's only temporary, but re it really threw me off at first being in a different space. And I had to step away from it for a second and kind of come to the re realization that this space it was carrying a different energy. And I needed to adjust and kind of connect with it in a different way in order to be able to be present and deliver these messages in the way that 
you deserve and the way that I deserve. So um, I don't know if any of that will resonate with you guys, but I do feel called to share. So <laughs> take it if it if maybe in your life, like you're changing spaces or changing locations or there's an ener- energy shift happening, just know that the adjustments will be made. And if you're present with it, if you're aware about what's going on, it's all going to balance out. So, <laughs> and it's going to also gift you with a new, a new energy, you know, which is really exciting. It will kind of inject a new, once you adjust, it will inject a new vibrancy or, an, or just a, a different vibe into what you're doing, creating, or just who, what you're experiencing. So <laughs> let's get into the reading now. As you can see, I've already pulled all of your cards and they are separated into four different sections, which represent the four stages of the metamorphosis of the butterfly, starting with the egg stage, moving on to the caterpillar stage, then the chrysalis, and finally the butterfly. So a quick note about that is that you could feel, once we start getting into these messages and revealing them, you could kind of resonate with any one of these stages. You, what I'm, I mean by that is that you don't need to feel like you're in this egg stage. Perhaps you feel like you're, the messages of the caterpillar stage make more sense to where you are right now. But this is representative of a cycle. So if you do feel like you're in the caterpillar stage, just know that the next is going to be the chrysalis and then the butterfly, and then you're going to start anew with the egg stage. So take it as it resonates, filter it through your own intuition and experience, and know that any of that is valid. All right, so let's begin with the egg stage. So in the egg stage, this is the time period before birth where you're divinely protected and where possibility is the overarching energy that is in existence. All right, so you have the King of Cups as your tarot card, which for me represents being able to see and feel your emotions, but to not let them throw you off course at all, to be really emotionally mature. We have the Ant Spirit, which with the number 32, which breaks down to a five, the ant spirit for me is really about community, about building things in community, about being part of a greater whole. And your last card, sorry about that, <laughs> is forgiveness. Healing comes from acceptance. Help me, dear Lord, to fully accept what is knowing that this alone will open me to the new. So the message that's coming through right away for you guys for this egg stage is that you're really putting to bed old emotional pains and hurts through forgiveness. And these emotional pains and hurts very well are most likely came from being in a relationship or having experiences with other people. And these could be experiences that play over and over again in your mind. And so it's so important in order to get to this place of being able to forgive, to allow yourself to feel the emotion, to really feel it. For example, let's say that you had a friendship with a person who really didn't treat you kindly and you were always, you never faltered and you were always kind to them even when they treated you with unkindness and maybe you separated yourself from this friend and it's been months 
and you're in the shower in the morning and you just think you keep going over these experiences or they keep popping up in your brain and you just kind of shut them down because you're like, I'm ready to move on. But it's popping up in your brain because you're needing to kind of see the situation as it was to recognize that you were treated wrongly and badly and to kind of feel the feelings that come along with that, whether that be a little bit of anger or or a little bit of sadness or grief or whatever. It's like being emotionally mature isn't shutting down the emotions in order to live like a high vibe existence. It's feeling those things in order to live a high vibe existence and being present with your emotions in order to get yourself to to make that space within yourself. Again, it will continue to be a part of your kind of daily mental or emotional patterns or thoughts within your mind until you get to a place where you can really sit with them, be present with them, and then say, okay, I feel... I'm feeling this anger right now. Saying it out loud is actually a really helpful practice to say, I'm feeling angry right now. And it's because I went through this this past relationship where I wasn't treated with kindness and respect. And I just want to recognize this anger. Thank you for being here. Um, What do you want to teach me? And maybe this anger is trying to teach me that I don't deserve to be treated like like that and I need to be more honest in the future in the moment to the people that are hurting me or whatever so there's a lesson that's in it Um, and then you can say thank you for the lesson I'm ready to release this I'm ready to forgive and then that forgiveness really takes hold it roots down and it and it really does create space at that point I'm gonna read so this guidebook I love this this deck it's so lovely And this guidebook has a tiny little uh, poem for each one of the animal spirits. And so I I love reading them (laughs) in the readings because they're so short. So the ant spirit, the word that they that they um, associate with the ant spirit is patience. And it says, oh, tiny ant, your patience grows like the sands of time. Can I learn to be like you, or is it too sublime? Oh, that makes a lot of sense for me, along with these other two cards, because I have a feeling that you are a person that really loves to sit in joy, and your greater vision for your life is one of of joy and happiness and and beauty and, and all the good high vibe emotions. And so when the negative ones come up, I think you can kind of not gift them the time. I don't know, because we've trained ourselves to, or, or some spiritual teachings can make you feel like, like sitting in those negative emotions is, is a bad thing, but in my opinion, it really isn't. And they deserve our time. They deserve our, our patience to work through them in the timing that is required from them and it's going to gift you in the end again with so much space for for newness to come in all right so let's get into the caterpillar phase now so this is the phase that the caterpillar's only job is to eat and to grow so this is the phase for you where you're going to want to consume and learn as much as you can about the things that are going to gift you to grow into the person that you want to be or to gift you into acquiring the skills that you desire or whatever it is for you. So let us get into it. Your tarot card is the Empress. Mm. The Empress is such a creatively fertile energy are and so I feel like the space that you're making in this egg stage is just like there's some really fertile possibility 
that can come in in this caterpillar stage. You have the porcupine, both number threes here with the empress and the porcupine. This 12 breaks, breaks down to a three. And then we have self-love. Show me how to love myself. Show me how to take care of the inner child. Show me how to be kind within. When you step into self-forgiveness, so much can change on the outside. Very interesting. I think that you're recognizing and realizing maybe after this or during this egg stage, how you've allowed others to treat you less than what you're deserving of. And I think you're coming to a place of forgiveness here with them. And in this caterpillar stage, you're forgiving yourself for those things. And you're learning how to protect yourself and place healthy boundaries and be really honest about uh, your needs and wants. First with yourself and then with others. And it's gifting you with this energy that is like the most divine energy to receive. Like you are becoming this beautiful chalice or this beautiful vessel. And you're doing so by learning how to really, really love who you are and to protect who you are. And you're just going to be this, like I said, this vessel that is open for divine flow to make its way in. So like we said, the caterpillar stage is a time for learning, for consuming. So if you don't feel like you've gotten to this stage where you're completely loving of yourself, you're, you're in this creatively receptive state, you're protected, um, this is where you're learning how to get yourself there. To learn how to never kind of stand for the things that maybe you had in the past in your relationships with others and with yourself too. Okay, so let me read the little poem. <laughs> the word that they associate with porcupine is innocence. And it says, porcupine, remind me of innocence again. With every man a brother, each woman a friend. Yeah, it's, it's like about loving the purity of your soul. Which I think in the past, you were trying to let out the purity of who you were, but it didn't have the protection around it that you need in life. It's interesting because the egg in and of, of itself is you're very divinely protected in the egg stage. So it's like even though maybe you were being hurt by others your divine protection was never lost and it was always guiding you to learn how to be able to protect yourself and this empress energy is that kind of mama bear energy that's super protective of what she has to offer and you're learning to embody that like we said, you're, you're really loving, who learning at least, how to love who you are and learning how to protect that through being honestly who you are, purely who you are, and not allowing others to, not allowing negative kind of forces to, to be in your sphere for, for very long. You know, you're learning how to really recognize who you can let in and who you kind of need to keep at a distance. And that's a really, really beautiful thing to learn how to do. We all need to learn how to do that and in a balanced way. So it's a great lesson. All right, so let's jump into the chrysalis phase now. So this is the time that you need to be really still. It's the time when the greatest transformation happens because it's the deepest 
transformation. You are coming into contact with yourself on a very deep level and and with spirit. You're really, really connecting to your true and deep spiritual self. All right, so you have... Santa Muerte, which is the death card, so appropriate for this stage because this is the the period of kind of like massive death and then like getting ready to rebirth. I love that. You have the armadillo with the number 28. And you have empowerment. When you ask the divine to take over, you get pulled into your own authentic power. It's a force of inner love that wants your wholeness and magnificence. Unfold my true and radiant self, dear Lord. So it really feels like what you've learned in the caterpillar stage about loving yourself, about protecting yourself, it's just the beginning beginning of what is going to to happen for you it's like you start letting divine inspiration in and you start to flow with it and it starts to change you in ways that you didn't even realize it starts to feed you lessons that are so empowering and so much that you didn't even realize you were carrying really begins to fall away it just feels like you're lift like your spirit is being exposed and you're being lifted up. Let's see what armadillo. So armadillo represents boundaries. And it says armadillo, armor all my boundaries. Teach me my shields. Reflect all the hurt so I will not yield. It's so interesting because that's a lot of what the energy I was feeling in the caterpillar stage for you. Yeah, it just feels like you are really transforming into the embodiment of what you were learning in the caterpillar stage. These two feel super connected, but in the vein that it's it's learning and then embodiment of fully transforming into this being that is absolutely divinely connected and inspired and absolutely divinely and physically protected and absolutely empowered and shining and and full it's also really deepening and rooting down the what you're learning in this caterpillar stage like really turning those into your root system so there are a few questions that this guidebook poses for the armadillo medicine and i think that they could be really powerful questions to ask yourself in order to deepen and root down in this new empowered state that you're that you're embodying here it says, am I honoring the time I need for my personal enjoyment? Do others treat me like a doormat? Why do I always get upset when I'm taken for granted? And is there a reason for my being a yes person? So it's kind of reflecting on your ex- the experiences that you've had after having kind of pulled yourself out and learn how to protect yourself. It's just, it's deepening the lesson. It's deepening the lesson. Like I said, these two stages for you are really, really connected. They're similar, but it's just taking it to a new level. Okay, let's hop into the butterfly stage now. So this is where you fully emerge as your divine self. And I really feel like this was, you were connecting deeply with that here in this chrysalis stage, but you're really coming out and allowing it to be seen. You're shining, you're flowing with life. And this is the stage where you 
have gotten to the point where you can begin to serve others. So I want to say that maybe these two stages for you that you went through, the caterpillar and the chrysalis stage, learning how to protect yourself and love yourself and empower and be an empowered being, they're incredibly important for you. That's probably why they kind of came out twice in a way. Because I feel like you're so divinely connected. You're so kind of sensitive to that that energy that learning how to protect yourself is a mass of massive importance to you massive I cannot understate that it's massively important to learn how to protect yourself to learn how to love yourself in order to become be out in the world and to be like to serve the world okay so we have the seven of wands, which I love that this is coming out because so if we think about the seven of wands coming after the six of wands, the six of wands, which is representative of victory, the seven of wands is protecting that victory. It is taking that victory and and owning it. So we have the turkey with the number 31, which breaks down to a four. And the turkey always makes me think of gratitude, of being grateful, of being thankful. And then we have health. Allow me divine to be tender and accepting of my body, no matter what ailments I may have. May I always know it's doing the best that it can. Help me be a loving ally and friend to this sacred form. So the reason I think that is so necessary for you to learn how to protect yourself in order to be out in the world again, to gift the world with your sacred, sacred gifts is because I think that in the past, the experiences that you've gone through because you're such a sensitive person have maybe even taken on, you have taken that into your physical vessel and had issues with your health because of absorbing these kind of negative energies so please like the the biggest message of your reading is to be so to really really deeply learn deeply deeply and intensely learn how to protect yourself how you individually need to protect yourself so that you can let your gift shine into the world and be safe because you have a lot to give it's it's palpable your the, what you gift the world is so divine it comes from a divine place this feels like the pile i i feel like you guys are whatever you create is channeled straight from source Whatever you gift the world is channeled straight from source. Your sensitivity is what makes that possible, but it's also what makes you vulnerable to icky things to come in. But if you learn how to be really empowered within yourself, if you take these two stages really seriously, you're going to be fine. You're going to be protected. You're going to be able to gift, but I feel like you just constantly are going to need to come back to these lessons to really, really deepen them and carry them with you. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, Okay. So the, wow, interesting. The message that comes with the turkey spirit, the, the words they associate it is giveaway. So interesting, right? It's like you're meant to be a giver. You're meant to share your gifts with the world. But you you don't want to give away <laughs> too much, right? So learning the, the measurements here are really important. So it says, Oh, Brother Turkey, so freely you give of everything that you are so others may truly live. 
<laughs> like my, it takes my breath away. Like I said, divine, divine energy here. But you deserve to give to yourself as well. And you deserve to protect yourself. You deserve to recognize through, I think your health is really going to expose you to any imbalances that may occur. So if you're starting to feel under the weather or you're starting to feel really tired, I think that's a true signal that you're like, your energy is being too pulled out from you and it's time to rein it back in and protect it again and get strong again. And then you can start to give because that's your nature. That's what you're meant to do. It feels like that is your serious divine purpose. So take care of yourself. Remember that you deserve to take care of yourself first and foremost. So that you can embody this and live a full life. I love you so much, pile number ones. You are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly beautiful souls. And you are lifting up the vibration of this planet like no other. So thank you for doing that. You're a true gift to all of us. I love you so much. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And I will see you in the next one. Pile number twos, hello and thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I'm really excited to get into this reading. As you can see, I've already shuffled and pulled all of the cards for your reading and they are divided into the four sections of the metamorphosis of the life cycle of the butterfly, starting with the egg, going next to the caterpillar, then to the chrysalis and the butterfly. I also wanted to mention that you could be at this at the moment that you were watching this reading in any one of these stages. So just know that if say you're in the chrysalis stage, next you'll go to the butterfly and then you're going to repeat this, like be open to the next new cycle starting with the egg. So it goes in this clockwise formation on this table, but it's it's that idea of the spiral of the repeating patterns that we go through in life changing all along the way and evolving and and just becoming more fully who we are so with that in mind let's get started so we're going to start with the egg stage and that is the time that is just full of of possibility it's the stage in which you're you're fully protected in a way to just allow yourself to dream a little bit. It's if we wanted to compare this cycle to our own as human beings, this is when you're a child. This is when, you know, your future is ahead of you and anything, anything, anything is possible, like we said. So let's jump in here. So you have the magician. along with the tarantula and sanctuary. A sanctuary resides inside you no matter what is happening. This inner temple beckons you to enter. Take a deep breath, enter and sit down on the throne of your own heart. Mm. This reeks of possibility, does it not? <laughs> I think for you in your egg stage are really being asked to recognize your personal tools, to really explore and become aware of your natural leanings, your natural gifts, your natural abilities and allow the other things that are kind of mm, hindering that or surrounding those tools to be to sh to fall away it's 
it's like I'm seeing a, a tool chest or something that is dusty. And it's because you haven't really, you've put them aside for whatever reasons, to live your life, to get by, <laughs> whatever the reason is. Many of us do, do those things. We become distracted from the things we love in order to make ends meet. But you are really being called in this egg phase to, to be present with those tools again, to clear the dust off and to pick them up and, and like reconnect with them, develop a new relationship within, with them as the person that you are now. Without putting any pressure on yourself or, or thinking that you need to do anything to make money or, or make anything happen, it's just simply being with those things. So what are those things for you? I have a memory that's coming up of a time when I was really young, maybe five years old or so, maybe four, and they used to have these little booklets of, ima of images where you would peel off, a, it was a sticker basically, and so you would peel off one section of this sticker to expose the sticky side, and then you would pour glitter on it. And then you would blow away the glitter and then you'd peel off another piece and put a different color glitter and you'd make this glitter image. And that very naturally called to me. And I still really, if I tap into my inner child, I still really love glitter and shiny things and art that's exciting to look at. It's really colorful and kind of um, like pop art type stuff. And when I got to a certain place in my adult years, before I had really started to reconnect with my inner child, I would sometimes look at the art that I would create and I would say it's childish looking. It's like I would, I would constantly be trying to knock it down for some reason because it wasn't what I thought it should be or it wasn't what was going to make me a million dollars or whatever but I was losing just the joy of of doing the thing that brought me like pure pleasure so in this egg stage <laughs> you're really just be, being asked to reconnect with yourself and what you love without any kind of judgment at all this magician can sometimes be a bit of a trickster energy I'm not quite sure why I'm being called to say that maybe it's because something is happening in your life perhaps that is tricking you into refinding this thing that you used to love somehow it's like something happens in your life that ends up redirecting you back to where you were. And it's really, it might not feel good. It might feel like something weird is happening and you don't have the control. But it is, it is to get you back to that place that is just a little more pure you. Yeah. So... This is your egg stage. Let's go into the caterpillar stage, which the caterpillar, and we can think of this again in our, as our like human growth, is the our adolescence, our teenage years. Our only job in this stage, or the caterpillar's only job in this stage, is to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and grow and grow and grow. So you have, for this stage, the Wheel of Fortune, the Black Egg, and Direction. Lord, please show me the right action right now. Please bring a sign and a miracle that gives clear direction. 
May I hear the promptings of my own body? And if for some reason I'm about to head the wrong way, please stop me. Right away, I'm feeling like having tapped into your inner child again in this egg stage is, is turning the wheel in your favor and sending you in a direction that feels really, really right to you. And then, so it's just like, keep going, you know, keep going. I'm going to see, I can't remember what the black egg represents in this deck. It is the throat chakra. Very interesting because in this egg stage, we saw the magician, which is ruled by Mer Mercury or the planet of communication. Also the planet that rules Gemini and Virgo. Um, so any of those signs or that planet could be really significant to you. But also, I think communication is really significant to you. So think writing, um, sharing your wisdom through words. Think also in this stage, if we're thinking about consuming, consuming or learning, you know, think of consuming content and reading books and things that help you grow and evolve this thing that you've re-tapped into in this egg stage you know whatever that is for you whether that be psychology or art or uh, car maintenance I don't know it's like things are starting to really flow for you in this caterpillar stage but really make sure that you take the time to learn all you can and be as present as you can with that student energy you know you don't just I hope I can express this without sounding rude but it's it's like you don't know a real student that really absorbs information knows that they don't know better than anyone so the more that you can just kind of relax and be completely open to learning without thinking that you know everything it just like opens you up so much to to the information and the knowledge and the wisdom that flows your way and I really do think once you start learning more about this it's going to give you even more of a of a finite direction it it's going to lead you in a way. And at that point, your only job is to, is to kind of follow the little nuggets that are being gifted to you along the way, along this path of, of learning. So honesty is also coming up with this black egg, the throat chakra energy with communication. And it is kind of unbelievable to me how we lie to ourselves sometimes without even realizing that we're doing so. And we do it to kind of make ourselves feel better or make others feel better. And I could have sworn that I was the most honest version of myself at age 23 but still at 34, I'm learning how to become more and more honest with myself and, and with others too, which is very, very important. So the message is coming out that the more honest that you can be with yourself during this period of time, the more clear you are going to receive messages the more clear that you're going to feel about the the actions that you take and the more confident too so just kind of check in with yourself and ask yourself if you're telling yourself or others even just the smallest white lies i think one of the ways that we can lie to ourselves or others most readily is by feigning enjoyment or laughing at things that aren't really funny to us like deeply just because 
you're in the presence of someone else laughing or I don't know. I mean, if this makes sense to you, (laughs) then take it and run with it. But that's what I mean. It's like a courageous honesty that you're being asked to adopt here in this second phase about like really laughing only at the things that make you laugh and and allowing yourself to say what's on your mind even if you feel like it might make other people uncomfortable this is actually your treasure and your gift is being able to be completely you and it's going to align you with people, places, experiences that make sense to that honest version of yourself, you know? So that's the message and I hope it's received (laughs) however it's received. I hope it it suits you. Anyhow, if it doesn't, be honest with yourself. (laughs) So moving on to the chrysalis phase. This is the cocoon phase, which I've read that cocoon is actually a term used for moths, not butterflies. I could be wrong about that, but um, the chrysalis phase. This is, for me, feels like can be the most trying and difficult phase for some because it's the phase when you're called to be still. And especially after maybe you've seen like a lot of movement in this caterpillar phase, to be still then, it it's like, no, <laughs> I don't want to. But it's, it happens for a reason. It happens so you can connect more deeply to yourself and what, it's, it's like it connects what you're doing, what you've discovered about yourself to the spiritual plane and it and everything deepens and gets just more full and and in like spirit gets infused in this moment in this chrysalis moment um it's the most transformative moment and it really is the time i feel when you're asked to trust most fully in in spirit so yes (laughs) okay so your cards the ten of pentacles what a lovely card maybe it won't feel so difficult for you maybe it will who knows uh the raccoon and companionship when you fully bless and embrace your aloneness You're ready for the ones who are meant to be with you. May I welcome this solitude knowing it will open the way for all healthy relationships. Interesting. So the Ten of Pentacles is the card of material, abundance, security, stability. Um, For me, I often think of the... The times in life where we can just allow ourselves to relax because we're we're really we've set ourselves up so well that we don't need to to push anymore. We don't need to uh, hustle. You know, we've done the hustling. That part is like we've checked all those boxes, and so we've really, really set ourselves up to to rest in this stable place. So that's a good thing for you in this chrysalis phase that you can rest assured that like you're materially, you're materially and financially kind of set up for yourself so that you can go deep. And I think what you're being asked to reflect upon And if you don't feel like you've set yourself up financially or materially, that is something you're being called to reflect upon in this chrysalis phase. Like, what what do I need to do in order to, like, what does that look like to me? What would it 
what does stability, what would that feel like for me? Or what would that look like for me? Because it's different for everybody. Some people want, you know, a home and five cars. Some people want just a small place to lay their head and maybe a garden. So if you have set yourself up in a way that's that's gifting you with stability and gifting you with just complete the complete kind of mental freedom from worrying about those kind of things to delve into this that is incredible and you're being called to really be grateful for that and if you're not then reflect upon it and reflect upon what it is that that you want to create for yourself what what it is how that will look for you so with this raccoon card this is a card of the creative or the sensitive kind of artist type that wears a mask that is afraid to expose who they really are they're timid and a little fearful and i think almost overly protective of themselves because they're so distrusting of their environment and with this companionship card along with this raccoon it feels the question is being asked of you within your relationships and this could be within your personal relationships or just between the relationship between you and the rest of the world. How have you been hiding these beautiful things, these beautiful creations possibly, or the things that you've learned out of the fear of exposing them? It could be that you feel that what you create isn't worthy of being seen or that it's just a really scary thing to put yourself out there, you know? And and so it's fear itself that's kind of keeping you in this place. But you're being called to recognize too that you are an innately creative being. An innately you are a being who's connected to to others too. The Ten of Pentacles as well makes me think of community. So it's like, how can you use what you naturally love, what you've naturally kind of are drawn to learn about? And I want to, the message is coming up right now that the things that you naturally love can sometimes, a way for you to recognize what those are is by recognizing what you're naturally drawn to learning about. Okay, so that's just side message. But taking those things and asking yourself how how those can how you can expose those to the world to bring your light out into the world to recognize that that is serving and that they they will attract to you kind of the what you create will attract the people that they're meant to serve so another personal <laughs> story um i i didn't have social media for i think i got rid of it when i was 20 maybe and I didn't get it again until I was 33 and I was an artist the whole that whole decade plus I was creating these things and it took a lot of for some reason I felt really scared of sharing I think I felt scared of judgment and I was kind of attached to my own perfectionism and so nothing was ever really good enough I think probably a part of it too which I think lies within a lot of us is being scared of your own power 
you know, being scared of what those creations can draw into your life, even if those are the things that you, you desire for yourself, imagining yourself actually having those things is, can be overwhelming, right? But once I started to share, I realized how I was building up the fear so much more in my head than what was actually existing. And I, the moment I started to share things, it just opened me up to the world in a way that felt really good and right. And there wasn't as much, I was putting way more pressure on myself than was necessary. (laughs) a hundred percent so if any of that resonates with you I just hope that you know that what you create is worthy and that I hope that you you find the courage to put yourself out there with those creations because you're really really meant to you're meant to just be who you are follow what you love and express what brings you joy express what gifts you have what talents so that is your chrysalis stage is kind of coming and con- asking yourself the deep questions about these things that we've talked about and really sitting with them and i know this card companionship it mentioned um embracing your own aloneness this period of time this chrysalis time can feel very isolating but the purpose is to really get in tune with yourself deeply and and realign for when you do come back out again to be amongst like-minded souls okay so let's move on to the butterfly stage this is when you emerge as your divine self you shine and you flow and it's really like where the egg stage and the caterpillar stage were more just for you and the chrysalis stage too was for you but it's like preparing you to step into this butterfly stage which is where you can start serving others but serving others in a way that really really feels aligned and in a way that doesn't strip you of energy you know you give your gifts and they're welcome into the world and it and you only feel like brighter and lighter okay so you have what is this the nine of cups what an amazing amazing card to come out for this this is individual like wish fulfillment or individual emotional fulfillment Just being fully, it feels a little sensual. I'm not sure why, but it is. It's like really embracing all of the the pleasures that life has to offer. And, And just, oh, basking in it. Okay, you have the hyena. This is the card that represents... The, the personality type that makes jokes in order to mask their own pain. The immediate kind of example that I am thinking of are comedians like Chris Farley or, uh, or John Belushi uh, that were hefty. And they always made fat jokes about themselves. But I think that they were really hiding a really deep insecurity that they had with their own bodies. You know, so this is what that hyena card is. It's that person that jokes about the, the, the place where, that, where you feel insecure. And you joke about it to hide your own kind of vulnerability. Okay, so then confidence. Divine confidence is completely different from the bravado of the ego. You make space for something larger to take hold. Please fill me with your confidence, O love. Grant me courage I never knew I had. 
So pile number twos in this butterfly stage, you, if you feel pulled to make fun of yourself or treat yourself like you don't deserve this goodness that's in your life, know that you do deserve it and know that your, your divine right is to be who you are and be fully confident in, in who you are without needing to, to kind of make other people comfortable by making a joke about yourself, right? It's like you might be receiving a lot of compliments in this butterfly stage. The hyena personality is going to, if someone says, oh, that work that you put out is really awesome and the hyena's like, oh, I don't even know how to make a joke. <laughs> That's the funny thing about it. Um, what would they say? I don't know. I can't think of a good example. I, I'm not good at making jokes up on the spot, maybe, in this moment. <laughs> but I think you get what I'm saying. Just be proud of what you've created and accept the compliments and accept the feeling good about this, you know? We so often don't allow ourselves to feel good and proud of ourselves. For some reason, we think that that is like arrogance or self-importance, but it's, it's not. Please be proud of yourself. Be confident in what you've created and say, I did that. I did that. I got so far. I went on this journey and it's been up and down and it's taught me so much and it's all so incredible. I'm not going to make a joke about it. I'm going to really deeply love it and be proud of it. Yeah, I guess the last message that I have to give is that from this butterfly stage, you have been so set up to embrace what you naturally love, to learn about it, to kind of question and understand how that's going to fit in, to really start seeing the value in it and then letting it out, letting it out and being proud of it. And then from that place, you're going to go into another another cycle and so you you know it's it's so necessary for you to get here so that you can get here and then here and then here again but totally different more evolved like we said i think i don't know why i feel like i want to deliver more messages but i think that's all <laughs> and i'm sure there's probably more that you feel internally so please like check in with that and run with it but I love you so much, pile number twos. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next one. Pile number threes, hello. And thank you so, so much for being here. For those of you who chose the black tourmaline and the wild elemental oracle, this is your reading. As you can see, I have all your cards already laid out for you. And they are divided into four categories, the four stages of the metamorphosis of the butterfly, starting with the egg stage, then moving to the caterpillar, the chrysalis, and the butterfly. One quick note I wanted to mention is that you could feel like you are in any one of these stages. So just know that whatever stage that you're in, the cycle moves if you're looking at this screen in this count or in this clockwise um, motion. <laughs> so if you're in the caterpillar stage right now, you're going to go to the chrysalis, the butterfly, and then you'll start a whole new cycle with the egg stage. So just know that any of that can be totally valid. Let us begin with the egg stage for you. So this is the stage before birth, a stage where you're like fully protected and where possibility is the overarching 
overwhelming, completely present energy. So your cards for this egg stage, your tarot card is the Queen of Pentacles, which represents just this really grounded, feminine, nurturing, but also, as we see in this card, uh, hardworking, but it's hardworking in a state of flow and grace. Being really present with the earth or with your natural kind of energy state and being confident in that. The queen of pentacles is actually really, really confident energy and mature too. All right. So we also have the badger with the number three and Trust. When love is invited to take over, right actions arise at the right time. Allow me, dear divine, to wait patiently until the timing is right. Let me rest in the unknown until a clear path is shown. I'm just reading a little bit from the guidebook for the badger. And it says... When Badger shows up in your life, you're being told that you have to own the right to walk your path at your own pace. Trust that you are exactly where you need to be and that all you need to walk this path is being given to you. Stay grounded in the present moment and be confident that wherever you are, that is where you are supposed to be. Badgers create many burrows and typically roam from burrow to burrow, never staying at one for very long. The aggressive nature of the badger is giving you the message that you are well within your rights to get upset if someone is trespassing on your goodwill, your kind heart, or your path in life. So in this egg stage, it really feels like tapping into that part of you that is like, I know who I am and I'm just going to do me. Some people in this egg stage don't have that within them already, but you really do. So that's a true gift to kind of have an awareness of who you are and what you love. You may have felt like you needed to kind of protect that part of yourself. You may have had to defend yourself against others so many times because they weren't in agreement with that or whatever. But with this trust card, and it's saying, when love is invited to take over, right actions arise at the right time. I think it's asking you to soften just a little bit. Not on the knowing what you love. Please keep that like confidence in, in knowing what you love and who you are. That is beautiful, and I hope you never let that go. But it's saying that Instead of being defensive towards other people, just allow others to not agree with you and try <laughs> to get into that space where you're unbothered by it. Because it's only kind of like an energy that would be distracting. So it's, it's reaching that level of maturity to just like do you, do what you love, embrace what you love, and let others talk if they want to talk and be like, all right, I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, it could feel like, you know, you're working and you're doing what you love, but you haven't quite received anything from it yet. And maybe that's something that you, you would like and... So with the Queen of Wands and this trust card, it's just tapping into that patience and, and continuing on, never giving up on, wh on what you're doing, on what you love, and just know. I think the lesson for you is to drop that defensive quality because that is when you're going to be open up to receiving more 
You're going to make space to receive more because you're going to be more prepared for what, what you receive. I really love this energy. And I'm sorry that you've had to kind of protect yourself against others. Um, but say lovey, you know, <laughs> let them do them. You do you and, and keep embracing what you love. So in this caterpillar stage, you're in the caterpillar stage. The caterpillar's only job is to eat and eat and grow. So for us, this is the stage where we really want to consume knowledge and learn and, and grow what we've kind of been gifted naturally. Mm -hmm. We can think of this as like the adolescence or the teenage years in a human being. Um, but as I've said, these cycles continue. So it's valid for wherever you are in your life. Okay, so your card is the Eight of Wands. So look, the patience pays off with this Eight of Wands card. You start to see movement coming in. You really start to see that the seeds that you are nurturing in this egg stage start to blossom and bloom and grow. You have the snake with the number nine, which really makes me think of transformation. I think this movement is going to cause a big transformation for you. And then you have solitude. Once you embrace the inner divine and your own sacred solitude, the right people arrive at the right time exactly on schedule without forcing or chasing. And for me, it kind of feels like you may have already gone through this period of solitude in this egg stage and you've really like had to embrace yourself and who you are and let down your guard a little bit and the reason and kind of let people just like be foolish if they want to be foolish and the reason that you were uh, kind of coaxed or asked to do that in this egg stage is because there's going to be some quick stuff happening in the caterpillar stage you're going to be thrust into a greater, more expansive period of time. And so it's good that you kind of prepared yourself through the solitude and you've, you have kind of embraced your own, your own self and, and people start to come into your life and that's, and there are people that are more aligned with who you are. Where in the egg stage, you may have been surrounded by people that weren't, clearly weren't very aligned to who you are. So you felt like you had to protect yourself from them. When you get into this caterpillar stage, you start to really be met with more and more people that are aligned with you are. But the, it's so fast that you need to learn how to protect yourself in a new way. And through these meetings, through these interactions that you have with people, it causes you to really reflect and understand yourself better and you do transform. And it also feels like you're really shining brilliantly. Like you have shed this skin and you're, you're just out and you're glowing. But since this is the caterpillar stage and the time period where you're meant to learn, it's like being out and amongst people and in new experiences. It's like you're being sh almost shocked with so much newness, new information. And that's the reason I, why I said you need to protect yourself in a new way because it can be so intense, the speed of it all. And especially with someone who's kind of a queen of pentacles nature at heart this can be a little bit <laughs> overwhelming this speed this this rate of 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 experience of growth 
So the solitude is probably also asking you to remember to take some time alone too, within this speed, within this new experience. It almost feels like you were planting the seeds for, this is just an example, by the way, but for like a new business or something like that. And you really like day by day, you were working at it and you were defending it, even when people might have said it was a bad idea. And then you see yourself like shoot into a really prosperous time where people are recognizing what you're doing. And it's like, whoa, this is awesome, but it's really intense. So remember to take that time to kind of sit and be still and just remember the the humble beginnings. But it's awesome. I love the vibe. All right, so next we're going to be jumping into the chrysalis stage. And as I've told the other piles, This stage can be really difficult for some because it's when you're called to be still. When you're called to reflect and when you're called to deepen your relationship with yourself and with what you are doing in this world. But something tells me for you, I don't know, maybe it won't be so hard, but we'll see. Okay, so you have the Six of Swords which very much, especially after this really quick moving time period with the caterpillar stage, it feels like this was a little bit chaotic feeling, but a good kind of chaos. And you're, it's, it's definitely slowing down the energy and you're going to have to readjust, you know, the buffalo or bison with the number six. And I think this card is very much about being grateful for everything that you have. The indigenous people who hunted buffalo or hunted in general, they were notorious for using and being grateful for every single part of the animal and recognizing that this animal carried a spirit and it gifted them. And so it would be... What's the word? I want to say it would it would be a great disrespect to not use every part of the gift that was given through this spirit, through this spirit's life, you know? All right, so we also have striving. Eventually, the individual ego's drive to make things happen falls away, replaced with a relaxed, trusting openness to answers as they arise. Thank you, Divine, for letting me move with the flow. I love this vibe that you guys are carrying in this chrysalis stage because it really, really did feel like you have put so much effort into what you've been doing and it's paid off big time. And so you should congratulate yourself. But this stage is actually a really nice reprieve from from this intensity in the caterpillar stage where you can just sit back and be grateful for what you've accomplished. Like we said before, you get to deepen then what you want. You want, you get to deepen more into what you want to do next. Where you were, what you were creating or what you were doing in this egg stage It almost felt like pure instinct, like that it was your drive to do what you were doing and it took you places. But when you're working out of pure drive like that and pure determination and pure motivation, I think you can lose a little bit or you you may have just not gotten to the place where you get to really, really sit with it in gratitude and allow it to gift you back in a way by just being present with the energy. I'm having trouble explaining it a little bit, but there's much, much more ease coming into your process at this point in your chrysalis stage. 
yeah, it's like instead of doing all the pushing that you were doing before to make things happen for yourself, you just get to sit back and appreciate. So it really, this time period for you in this crystal stage is incredibly lovely. It's just that moment in time where you can look around and be thankful. Mm. Yeah. And that in and of itself is what deepens what you, like the next phase of your journey. It, that gratitude. <laughs> it's something that you feel. I don't know if I'm describing it really, but uh, it's, it's really nice. Okay, so let's move on to the butterfly stage. So this is the stage where you emerge as your divine self, where you shine and flow. And it's, the, it's having gotten to a certain point, a certain level of maturity, where you can really serve others. That's why this deepening process is so important, is because it's not all about you and what you're doing anymore. And that was never a bad thing, by the way. That was so necessary. It's part of the process. But you can start to, to ask yourself or come in line with how can I use my gifts, my talents, what I've learned throughout my process to serve the greater collective. So we have the Knight of Wands. More quickness, more movement, more fiery spirit. The seal with the number 14. And self-sufficiency. The ultimate self-sufficiency is relying on God. It doesn't mean hiding in a cave and saying, I don't need people. Instead, it's saying God is my source and I am willing to receive all the help, love, and support that wants to come. It feels like in this butterfly stage... Yeah, it feels like you're tap, re-tapping into this instinctual energy that you care that you you've had in the egg stage that took you so far already. And it's just really it is restarting the cycle, but in this next phase you're not gonna you're not needing to kind of protect yourself from this negative stuff anymore. Um, like there's been a trust. They People outside of you have seen what you're capable of. And I think people are going to be really excited to be on your team. People are just going to be really supportive of you. And so like whatever you instinctually want to do next... You're going to have a lot less people questioning why <laughs> or what. Uh, with the seal card, it mentioned in the book that it's really connected to your dreams, your hunches. And so that also made me uh, think of instinct along with this knight of wands, which to me is like straight up instinct. <laughs> but connecting that instinct to with that that gratitude that you developed here, that kind of connection with the divine that you really developed in the chrysalis stage, it's like this thing that you feel pulled towards in the butterfly stage is very divinely inspired. Even though it's total instinct too, it's, it's also attached, very attached to, to the divine with your awareness. So in the egg stage, of course, what we do, what we create is all kind of divinely inspired. But in the egg stage, you're not necessarily aware that it's divinely inspired. In the butterfly stage, what you create, what you're instinctually drawn toward, suddenly it's like, it's it's not suddenly. I mean, you, <laughs> you went through a process to get here, but you're connecting your actions to your spirit. And it does welcome more like presence of, of others to, to witness it, to be a part of it. 
And it's really whatever you're doing in this butterfly stage, whatever you're moving towards, whatever you're creating is really magnetizing to others. It's so good. Your reading is so awesome. Like you're opened up to ah, just divine inspiration and you go for it. So it carries with it a, a different vibe than in the egg stage. But it's so clear to me how this could be a continuing cycle for you in the best way. And it's just going to get bigger and deeper and more profound as you go along. Uh, I hope I did this reading justice. <laughs> if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But I love you so much, pile number threes. This is awesome, awesome energy. And I am wishing you all like the best of, of times, the best of luck, the best of everything on this journey. So thank you for being here. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Pile number fours. Hello and thank you so much for being here. For those of you who chose the Pyrite, Crystal, and the Animal Allies deck, this is your reading. As you can see, I've already pulled all of your cards and laid them out for you in four different sections representative of the four stages of the butterfly's metamorphosis, beginning with the egg stage, moving next to the caterpillar stage, then the chrysalis, and finally the butterfly. One quick note I wanted to mention is that you could feel, as I read these messages, you could feel like you're in any one of these stages, but just know that this is a cycle. So let's say you're in the chrysalis, you feel like the messages of the chrysalis stage are really resonating with where you are now. Then you will move next to the butterfly stage and then you're going to begin a whole new cycle in the egg, egg stage. So take it as it resonates and really, really tap into your own intuition to receive uh, the messages and and you'll know where where you fit in all this at this very moment in time. Okay, so let us begin with the egg stage. So this is the stage, first of all, before birth, where possibility is the energy that reigns supreme. It just feels like anything, anything, anything is possible. And you're, you're very protected in this stage as well. Okay, so your first card, the tarot card, is the Ten of Swords. So this is representative of having really, either having ended or ending intense mental, negative mental cycles. Negative mental patternings are being put to bed, are dying and so you're opening up then to, to new kind of clarity within your life. You're creating space for a newness of the mind. All right, so your animal card is the raccoon. And it says hardship. May I embrace what's happening right now as baffling or painful as it is. Help me, God, to trust where you are guiding me. I am yours. The message that's coming out right away is that this period of time for you in this egg stage is difficult as we, we can see but it's filled with purpose. And that is the, the purpose is the big ending of the final ending of the, of the negative mental cycles. And with the raccoon here, I'm going to look at the guidebook in a second, but I know that in other decks, raccoon energy, it is symbolic of 
of the type of personality that has so much creative energy within them, but is afraid to show it, is afraid to expose it for whatever reason, but it boils down to just fear, fear of being seen. So this time period of this egg is teaching you how to let go of that fear. And that is what that negative cycle is within your mind. And it's not comfortable necessarily learning this big lesson. You know, it could be that I can give you a personal example. And this feels pretty close to home and a little bit difficult to be vulnerable about. But it does describe this type of situation perfectly. So I was involved in a relationship with someone that I had to keep secret. And so I started to really feel like I wasn't worthy of being seen. It was the most difficult time period to go through because I like became really isolated from other people and I was holding on to this thing that no one knew about and I couldn't share it with anybody and it was eating me up inside and it was so, so, so hard. But I was creating one day, I was pasting and collaging on this desktop and when I finished it underneath the desktop I wrote I will not hide anymore and it felt like a really finite like anthem or or decision that I was making for myself that I was never gonna let myself be in a situation where I had to hide ever again that's that kind of ten of swords energy it was the last straw because I felt the full weight of hiding myself of keeping that secret it was like I I understood how awful it was and I wasn't ever gonna let myself be in that situation again I wasn't gonna let myself not be seen not be heard. I wasn't going to keep secrets anymore because nobody deserves that. We all deserve to be seen. So I hope that story helps you understand this type of energy. And if that is like, of course, that's might not be your specific situation, but if you're going through anything that feels similar to that, my heart goes out to you because I do understand how painful, utterly painful that can be. So just know that you're worthy of being seen and you're worthy of, of being absolutely who you are without hiding any portion of yourself. Pile number four is. Okay, so in the guidebook for the raccoon, for this deck, it says disguise, curiosity, cleverness. Are you wearing a mask to fool or hide yourself or others? Raccoon invites you to take an honest look at your various identities and all the roles you play in life. Is it time to don a new mask in order to transform yourself into who you want to become? Who are you being in the world and who would you like to be? I would say take any mask off and be who you are. Pile number fours. Because you really, really deserve it. Be as honestly who you are as you can be. Okay, let's jump into the caterpillar phase now. Where the caterpillar's only job is to eat and to grow. So if we think about this in a human sense, we can think about this as the adolescent stage that we go through. But like we said, this is a cycle. So it's, it's that time period where you're growing and you're consuming and you're learning. You're pulling in knowledge. You're pulling in wisdom. 
and it's really expanding who you are. So the card that you have is this star, which is so such a beautiful energy to come after this kind of really, really tough energy that you went through in the egg stage. Um, the star represents deep healing and being seen. So good for you, pile number fours. We have the beaver, which tells me that it's taken a lot of hard work to, to get here. Or it could mean too that you're really just ready to be seen and you're ready to do the work in order to get yourself to the point where you feel confident and comfortable being seen. And so if I could recommend that you just read and consume content by people that have reached a level of whatever it is you want to reach, a level of confidence, a level of honesty, a level of uh, artistic expression, or a level of of kind of mastering relationships. I don't know, whatever it is that you want to achieve, reach for the highest goals for yourself and turn to the teachers that have already kind of achieved that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have truth. When everything is done as an offering, even the act of speaking, you get shown when to talk and when to be silent. Your words come from silence, not fear. You do the talking, dear Lord. Take me over and speak through me. I just feel like either you feel really, really called to put in the time and the effort to start living as honestly as you can after this period of, of hiding and really it's going to pay off the work that you start to do the the things that you start to learn you're going to to begin embodying that may every word that comes out of your mouth be honest to who you are may every action that you take be something that you truly truly want to do and may you gift yourself, like I said, only with the highest, only with the best, whatever that means for you. No more playing yourself small or allowing others' opinions or whatever to affect you. This is not about anybody else anymore. This is about you. This is about taking care of you, of beginning to really love who you are, beginning to honor yourself, beginning to build a certain structure and stability from that place of honoring yourself. Because you had the 10 of swords here and this kind of massive crumbling of something that was a pattern for a very long time for you, you have the chance now in this caterpillar stage to rebuild from that nothing state, which is so beautiful in this case. And so learn everything you can about, first of all, tap into what you want that to look like and then learn everything you can about getting yourself there, about building that honest, stable structure for yourself. I'm also being drawn to in this star card, I don't even know if this is right, but this looks like the symbol for the sacral chakra, maybe. So in this caterpillar stage, you are being urged to tap into that sacral chakra, to that place where play, where creativity, where your own like sexual energy can be used as a source of growth and healing. And it can open you up to oh, like divine pathways. I've heard that the sacral chakra, even though the next chakra up is the solar plexus, but like the sacral chakra and the heart are really connected. That womb space or that place where, where things can grow within you is so connected to your heart too. So honor what you love. Honor what brings you pleasure. And do so honestly. Do so without feeling like you need to hide yourself. 
really embrace that power that exists within you or really learn how to embrace that power that exists within you. I love, love, love this energy for you guys, pile number fours. After this difficulty, this is so incredibly welcome. All right, so let's hop into the chrysalis stage now. So this is the part, this is the time period where you go inside and you connect more deeply with what you are doing. You connect more deeply with what you want to do. You connect more deeply just with who you are. You transform and you allow spirit to come in and you really begin to trust. So you have the queen of swords. Ah, I love this for you so much because this queen of swords will not hide. Absolutely not. And they, she is devoted to honesty. She is that sharp tongue, like I'm saying exactly what I need to say type of personality. So good for you. You have the tiger. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love this for you so much. This tiger energy for me in this moment, in this reading, in the context of this reading is making me feel like protective mother energy. Also, it carries a very seductive quality, which connecting with that sacral chakra is so important. It's like embracing that feminine power that exists within you, no matter if you're male, female, or however you um, define yourself or, or feel. It's connecting with that, that power that exists within you and it is letting it out, letting it be seen, and letting it like protect you. All right, so you have self-acceptance. Nothing is more exhausting than endlessly working on yourself. When you offer your whole being fully to love, self-acceptance self arises spontaneously. May I rest in our oneness, dear divine. Yeah, it feels like you've done the work. And now you've gotten to this place of being like so intensely who you are. I don't know if you guys, I don't know why this is coming up. This is interesting, but I'm being drawn to the movie. What was it called? Cold Mountain or something and there's a character in that movie played by what is her name oh it's bumming me out that I can't think of her name but anyway she's this character who she's so sharp-tongued she's of the earth she's been raised like to be kind of scrappy and really speak up you have a feeling that she's been raised in a house of boys <laughs> but uh and so she just like gets things done she doesn't care what people think of her her appearance how she, how people perceive her based on superficial appearances she doesn't even think about that oh I'm being drawn to that character but also so her the companion character in that movie is played by Nicole Kidman and she plays this woman who she's never had to farm or or do anything kind of physically demanding and her husband or lover or something goes off to war and so she has to start doing that thing and so she brings in this other character this other character comes her way to help her with this land that she has to farm and so she has to go from this kind of, these two characters gift each other in a way. Um, Nicole Kidman's character has to get her hands dirty a little bit. And this other character who's real scrappy and who has been getting her hands dirty for all of, time, all of her lifetime, she kind of 
is gifted with this softness that Nicole Kidman has taught her maybe to get more in touch with her feminine side. So it feels like you're the amalgamation, is that the right word? Of both of those, of the person that knows how to do things or that's not scared of getting things done, of of getting your hands dirty, of of saying what you need, of saying what's on your mind. Uh, but also, you can just be comfortable in that. Like, you don't need to fight with anybody. That is kind of the, I wouldn't say warning, but maybe a piece of advice because it feels like you've come from this place of having to hide yourself and you really put in the work to learn how to let yourself shine and be. And so it's good that you've gotten here, but but don't overprotect yourself to the point of being of keeping others out or away. You can protect yourself while also allowing others to allow others to come into your environment. But if it doesn't feel right for you yet in this chrysalis stage to allow others to come in, like this is maybe it still feels really new that you're coming into your own power in this chrysalis stage and you want to get really strong within that power it's okay if you if you still need to keep others a little bit at a distance but when you feel like you're strong in your power you know let people in again knowing that your honesty will always protect you and you're never 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 gonna hide again you're gonna let yourself be seen so Finally, we go, we come to the stage of the butterfly. So in this stage, this is where you emerge as your divine self, which I feel like you're really, really tapping into here. But you then, through deepening this kind of relationship with yourself, you learn how you can bring it out into the world and serve others through being who you are. So let's see what cards we have here. We've got the Three of Cups. Oh, <laughs> this is really juicy energy because it does. It feels like you're just, you're coming out into the world and you're being, and you're enjoying life. And that is all you need to do. And it is celebratory. It's, it's fun. You're enjoying life again with people. And you're doing so from this place of power that you've really, really developed. And I think that people will love this quality that you've cultivated for yourself. And you, the way you serve is just by embodying that in the world and allowing that to be seen by everyone you meet. And, and then they can be like, damn, I want to do that for me. All right, so you have the horse, which is freedom. Where you were so like hidden here in this egg stage, you have gotten yourself to the place of being free and it has taken hard work. It has taken coming from the depths of, of uh, the depths. <laughs> you know, this really, really intense darkness. You are coming out into the light. And abundance. Wow, pile number fours. I am so proud of you and so excited for you uh, to just get yourself here. It's so incredible. Or this, maybe you've, this is where you've gotten yourself. And if it is, Please be proud of yourself because this has really been an intense journey. Okay, so abundance. Divine beloved, please show me how to feel fully deserving to receive. I release my ego's plan and open to being a vehicle for abundance. Yeah, in this butterfly stage, the message is just to be. Just to be and embrace life and be grateful for everything that comes your way 
and to recognize that it's coming to you now because you're ready for it, because you've stepped out of hiding, because you've learned how to step into your own power and to embrace your own power and to really solidify your own power and not be scared of your own power of your own power and not to feel guilty about being a powerful person. No. (laughs) You get to be this person in the world and you get to be around other people who are powerful too. And life is going to feel so beautiful and so full and so exciting and so adventurous and oh it's just lovely incredible energy I don't really have any more to say about that beyond like just get ready and have fun get ready for this place the everything is worth it by the way and even this this first stage that was really difficult think about if you're going through it now I'm sorry but I want you to know that there is a huge lesson here that you're going to carry with you throughout this whole entire phase and it's going to gift you so much in the end. If you've gone through it already and you're coming out of it, remember like the beauty of that lesson that you were taught because it, in the end, it was such a, an incredible gift. So I love you, pile number fours. This is amazing and I'm so excited for you. Thank you for being here. I love you and I will see you in the next one.